by uh, Mrs. Manidipa Bosha from Nandadeep also. And she is a, a specialist in neurooptometry. And over to you, Ms. Manidipa, you can take over the session. Thank you, Shubhudi, for a warm welcome. Hello, everyone. Welcome from India one more time. So today my topic about Duan Retraction Syndrome. Before starting presentations, I just want to know, is it, am I audible to everyone? Yes. Yes. Okay, fine. Is it, it, the class should be very interactive. So if you people have any kind of doubt, just feel free to ask me, okay? Okay. Okay. So I just start the presentation. Start with the introductions part. Yeah. So it is a congenital anomaly eye movement uh, characterized by variable horizontal duction deficit with narrowing of the palpebral fissure and globe retraction on attempted adduction occasionally accompanied by upshoot and downshoot. See, this is a picture of a child who has come, this is a picture post-treatment in a primary gauge. So if you're looking at this picture, probably you don't understand that is there any narrowing of the palpebral fissure height or not? Because both of the eyes look so much similar, right? In the same way, same way, if you go to the previous, before the treatment, the boys look at the primary gauge, right? But here, if you look in the both the eyes, definitely from the outside, you people can understand the palpebral fissure heart is not symmetrical. But in this picture, it's not clear that the, any narrowing of the palpebral fissure heart is there or not, or not there. So to see the DRS, this is very important, that EOM, that is extraocular muscles. Test is very much important. In this picture, when this boy look at the liver version, that means in the left gauge, here it is clear very easily the right eye is towards the left side, that means in the nasal side. As far as the yolk muscle, which is science that is already mentioned in a very nice way, thanks to science to make my job in very easier. But in this left eye, the eye is not goes towards the left side. Here, the right eye is narrowing compared to the left eye. So it is very much clearly visible that right eye palpebral fissure height is less compared to the left one, right? Is it understandable for the students? Yes. Okay. In this picture, same as this one also, when this patient is look at the dextro version, that means toward the right side, the right eye vision is restricted, but the eyes is looks towards the nasally. That means this side is narrowing compared to the right one. So for DRS, if a patient is having DRS or not, unless until you are not going to measure EOM, that is extraocular mus muscle balancing, you won't be able to understand that DRS is present or not, okay? So let's start with the, some uh, review of the literature, some history. So it is also known as stilling tuck duan syndrome. In our daily clinic, in day-to-day -day basic clinic, that strabismus is very common. So many strabismus are there, uh, isotropia, exotropia, hyperotropia, heterotropia, so many things. But in case of DRS, it represents less than 5% of all form of strabismus. DRS can be present as well as unilateral and the bilateral as well. But as per the recent studies, it represents 15 to 20% of all cases of DRS. So before proceeding the next topic, I just want to know, is there any idea, anyone, you can guess, that since how many years we are treat DRS? I mean, DRS how many old? How many years old? Any guess, students? I think not really. <laughs> okay, so, uh, might be it will be shocking thing because in years of 1879, Hugh first discovered, first reported a patient with congenitally anomal, anom anomalous eye movement and go retractions in the adduction. 
that mean he is the first time observer that a patient come to his clinic who is having globe retractions with the uh, muscles restrictions but that time it was not diagnosed or clinically significant that that is the drs or not later on so many scientists like 1895 1896 1887 and 1899 so many scientists saw so many things about this globe restrictions as well as the muscles imbalance but in the year of 1905 uh, scientist alexander duans reported a series of 54 cases uh, giving a detailed description of its clinical features and summarizing the possible etiopathogenesis of management in this syndrome. So as per scientist Alexander Juwan, it is named as a Juwan and retraction. So what is the meaning of retraction? The globe retraction occurs when the globe is displaced deeper within the orbit from its normal positions. That means if it is a globe, okay, so if this globe is, is socketed over here, right? If it is come this like way, so it is a very smaller way. This is the globe retraction. And syndrome, when I'm talking about the syndrome, that syndrome is not only in the ocular position. If it is a syndrome, then apart from the ocular thing also, the uh, like, you know, like the neurological things, limbs, ribs, foot, and fingers is also affected. That will come to later. So in all together, this is called Juan Retraction Syndrome. Is it clear why this is called DRS? Yes, clear. Okay. So decades later, with the advent of neuroimaging, muscle electrophysiology, because medical science is always changing. The terminology, the you know, like clinical features, the management levels, everything is changes. First. Uh, when we saw the muscles restriction, this was only limited on the ocular movement only. Later on, when the electrophysiology, is, uh, electrophysiology and the e, uh, ERT is invented, then we started of genetic analysis. There has been greater understanding of this form of strabismus. It considered a congenital cranial disinnervation disorder, in short, CCDD, giving better insights into the management of this challenging syndrome. Basically, when a person, though it's a child, though it's a, uh, any adult, is diagnosed as a syndrome, syndrome is basically present from the congenital way. Okay? Reason, definitely if it is a syndrome and if it is a congenital, then definitely ocular motility disorders will be there. That cranial disinnervation disorder, what I already mentioned before. And definitely... Inner muscles and immune muscles on actual or attempt adduction of involving eye or eyes. Co-contraction resulting in globe retraction. Etiology, it is most likely a spectrum of mechanical, anatomical and intervention of disorder of the extraocular muscles. So when I'm talking about that mechanical disturbance that can occur due to the presence of facial bands which are found in some cases of DRS. These bands act as least of cause limitations of the eye movement. So see, look at my hand. If I'm holding a you know, tightening elasticity band, then I can move in like that way and that way. But somebody is hold or else I just tighten this elastic band with some stone or yeah, some object, so automatically the length of this band should be reduced. If it will be reduced, then automatically there is a, a limitations of the movement, though it's a nasally, though it's a temporary site. Okay. Next is a see, there is a lateral rectus, and this is the band. If there is any band, so definitely the eyes just can move in the nasal site. Next is the anatomical changes. So when I'm talking about the anatomical changes are commonly seen in DRS, it is very common. Why? Because it includes fibrotic changes in the lateral on MR muscles and anomalous insertion. See, in this picture, you can see this is the third nerve and this is the fourth nerve, right? But there is an abnormal branch of the third nerve. If it is an abnormal branch of third nerve, when eyes move towards the third nerve side, that also this will be start from this side. But due to this junction, it will be stuck over here, okay? So there is a problematic to move in a free way, right? Clear in that side?
Yes, clear. Okay. Yes. Okay. So many studies suggested that DRS may be due to interventions of the LR by extra branches of third nerve in absence of six nerve fibers. But Huber suggests LR muscles could be three parts. Number one, normally the innervated portion, that's I already showed in the previous slide, portion innervated by third nerve and obviously fibrotic portion. And some other theories are said, LR muscle is a parti parti partially innervated by third nerve with or without six nerve intervention. Produces co contraindications of MR and LR on the adduction. Genetics, this is definitely, if it is a genetics, then definitely family history will be there. And here, five to 10% autosomal dominancy is also present. That CHN1, that gene, is responsible for having DRS. And in, if I'm talking about the chromosome number, the chromosome number should be chromosome one, four, five, and eight, that shorter arm and the longer arm as well. In clinical manifestation, see, this is the picture of three different patients. So when if something is come like, you know, strabismic, uh, uh, like strabismic clinical things. So if I'm telling that somebody has a strabismic, so it's definitely come to our mind. The patient is definitely having either exophoria, exo exotropia, isotropia, hypertropia, or heterotropia, right? Is anyone coming to the mind that if it is a strabismus, that thing can be the ortho? I don't think so. Because normally when it's a strabismus, definitely they are not presenting the orthophoric condition. So that's why we are considered as a strabismus. But in case of DRS, it won't be followed all of the time. If you see this eye, see, this is in a primary gauge. But primary gauge is look absolutely ortho. But if you look in the, this gauge, levoductions and the right, so the palpebral fissure height in both the cases are not symmetric. That means patient with DRS with the ortho position is also be present. In next picture, if you look over there, it's look like an iso, left iso compared to the right one. Again, when it's look at the this side and this side, there is narrowing on the palpebral fissure as well as here. So this is patient with the iso DRS. In the last picture, it's look like an exo. So this is patient with the exo -DRS. So what we learn from this slide that DRS can be present number one in an ortho condition, number two in an iso condition, number three in an exo conditions as well. And we have to classify it as well strabismic DRS. Okay. Okay. Next is. This is a nine cardinal gauge of a patient, and this is the primary gauge, right? In the when this patient is look at the primary gauge in an overview, we are seeing that this is the right over L. So normally, and the palpebral fissure height is already from primary gauge is already shown. That is the right palpebral fissure height is greater compared to the left one. Like, but in a later on, one is going to seeing in this side, this side, this side, and this side. Here, in each and every gauges, superior muscles, right superior rectus overaction. So this is bilateral GRS and right superior rectus overaction. Okay, this is the second point. We can clinically signify. Number three. So can anyone tell me that that there is three different patients and they are looking in the same direction? So please tell me where are they are looking? I mean the liver versions, they are dextroversion. Anyone? Hello, my question is, in this slide, there is a three different patients, all of them are looking at the same direction, okay? So just tell me the version, liver version, yeah, dextro version. Please, yes. Please unmute and join for the talk. Correct. Hello. 
Shall I repeat the questions one more time? Yes. Yeah, my question is, there is a three different patients. Those are looking at the same direction. What is the direction? Levo version or yeah, dextro version? Levo version. Yeah. Levo. Exactly, levo version. So when they are look at the levo version, there is already restricted. Say about minus four, minus four, minus four, and minus four. So this is also classified as a alternation in ocular rotation. Okay. This is two different patient. In this picture, you can already see the patient is looked towards the left face. I mean left side. So that means some patient with the DRS with the good vision, they can also have blurring of vision. I mean double visions, right? Yeah, like you know, double vision. So if there is a double vision, then and it's a syndrome which is already affected from the congenitally, definitely they will add up a abnormal head posture to reduce the double vision. So that's why that both of kids are looking towards the left side to make it more clear. So this is the face turn direction of the left affected in isolated ones, and this is the face turn opposite the right affected. Okay. So this is also classified as compensatory head posture in short CHP, and this is the upshoot and downshoot as little bit of critical cases I can able to see that. Sorry. Uh, patient with exit ones and left hypertrophia due to anomalous uh, anomalous. See, this is the primary gauge and this is the left hypertrophy. But if a patient come to you, your clinic in like that way, it look like a L over R. But startingly, that uh, palpable thickness is greater compared to the right arm. Then you start with the nine cardinal gauges. There you can easily understand in a different kind of thing. So this is we'll consider as the upshoots and downshoots movement. Okay. This is a picture where I just note. I mean, mention in a four different different direction. This is the ortho. This is the up gauge. This is the down gauge. With the nine cardinal gauge, we have to also notice is there making any kind of pattern or not? Okay, so if you consider in the primary gauge for the up direction, primary direction, and the down direction, see the deviation is less here, then is greater here, and the most is deviated is the upside. So this is a V pattern. Okay, as well as this is a this is a this is the less direction this is the more and this is the highest one so this is the a pattern and this is a c the direction of this one and this one it's almost same and less than is the primary gauge so this is the x pattern in history of drs and we are talking about the pattern of the strabismus v pattern is more common okay this is called alphabetical pattern. So we can also notify that alphabetical pattern as a DRS. Apart from that, that we have the sensory uh, anomalies. Like if somebody have any kind of motor problem, a yeah, sensory problem, like, you know, like if somebody have with double visions, like blurring of vision, head posture, this is all comes under the sensory anomalies. Clear? Okay. Yeah. And once again, how to know is it v pattern how to know is it v pattern? V? Ah, v yeah. pattern. okay so if you go to this slide say this is the deviation of this eye between these two eyes okay yeah. say is uh, near about that hushback is 15 okay and here is hushback near about is a chain and this is near about five. So if you're con converted in the prismatic diopter, like into 2.5, multiple by 2.5 prismatic diopter, it's supposed to be like, you know, like 25 diopter, 30 prism diopter. It's supposed to be like um, 20 to 25. And this is supposed to be like 10 to 15. So definitely uh -huh. in down, down gauge, this is the minimum prismatic deviation. In ortho primary gauge, this is the more than this. And the up gauge, this is the highest one. And it's look like a V. Ah, uh, okay, okay, I understood, understood. Okay, same as for the A pattern, same as for the X pattern. So this is a video while doing the, uh, just check it and tell me. I mean, what is, what do you observe it in this video? 
this is a patient with a drs just observe that eom and just let me know yeah i'll just click one more time because you have to find it out some mistakes not the correct one so i just play one more time okay Yeah, did you find any kind of mistake? See, yeah, the person is perform EOM test in a correct way. Anyone? Shall I play one more time? Can you repeat your question? Yeah, I just repeat it. I'm just going to show a video one more time and you have to find it out the thing. I mean that person who is performing the EOM, is he doing in a correct way or wrong way? Okay. Yeah, I'll just. Okay. Okay, I'll just explain it. See, first of all, when patient, I told in the starting slides only, when a patient is come to you, unless until you are not going to check the EOM, so uh, like uh, you won't be able to understand that patient is having DRS or not. But when you're performing EOM test, just a And you were performing that EOMA test. So see, you can see the palpebral fissure narrowing of this eye, okay? But the person is already uplifted the upper eyelid and that person is already, and we are not able to understand of this side that is it narrowing or not. So during check of that uh, EOM test, this is very important to do to do and to not to hold the upper eyelid like that way. So when you're doing the uh, like EOM test, will definitely start from like that way. Then I'll say to see this gauge, up gauge, up uh, primary gauge, up levo gauge, and this gauge. And when I'm just looking for the inverted, dip, I mean down gauge, then only I have to uplift it my eyelid and we have to look like that way. Okay, so a little bit clinical mistakes, then you can give you some troubleshoot to uh, diagnostic your DRS patient. Okay, so come to the classification. According to characteristics of limitations of the movement, Brown, uh, Brown and Hubers classifies DRS as in a three way. Number type A is a limited abduction and less marked limitation in adduction. That uh, adduction means is the inward movement of the eyeball, and abduction means is the uh, uh, that uh, the outward movement of the eyeball. In type B, limited abduction but normal adduction. Type C, limited of adduction exit limitations of the abduction. But scientists Hubers make it more easier for all of us, especially those are new learner to the DRS because. They mark limitation in the adduction. That means they cannot go in the that side. In type 2, limitation in the adduction. And type 3, there is a limitation for adduction as well as the abductions. Okay. If I make any broadly classified, there I can say that in type 1, this is very mostly common because abduction limited more than adduction. Uh, adduction with little innervation from the sixth nerve. LR is paradoxically in innervated by the third nerve. Type 2, limited in adduction with extrotropia in primary gauge. Okay. Type 3, both abduction and adduction are affected. And type, uh, type 4 is a adduction is attempted. Okay. 
so those are new learner for the grs this is very important to understand how they will understand i just repeat one more time for type 1 this is very common where adduction abduction limited more than the adduction this is the number 1 for type 2 limitation is adduction with the extratopia in type 2 extratopia will be there when you are going to check the covert and number 3 there is a limitation for the adduction as well the adduction okay so clinical evaluation definitely covert test is always there because if you are not going to perform the covert test you will not understand that there is a squeamish presence or not for the extraocular muscles yeah i told from the beginning that extraocular muscles how much important to rule out the drs number 3 change in the lead and globe positions is horizontal gaze here i want to tell some i want to tell you something say there is inner muscle paralysis or inner paralysis whatever so definitely patient when i'm talking to patient that you have to look in that side the patient i cannot move toward the left gauge right so there is very difficult to differentiate between the inner paralysis and duals only one different only one point will be there that is the globe retractions okay so if there is a inner uh, paralysis with the globe retractions go for the drs if there is a only the inner paralysis then definitely is the lr6 muscles paralysis okay then binocular single vision yeah if binocular single vision is present definitely is a good for us and good for the present as well but main point is how it is present is it present with the head tilt yeah without the head tilt we have to notify this things then go for the head chart or diplopia chart if a patient is complaining about the double vision and all and th second last topic point is the fdt okay what is fdt this is full form this is called is a force reduction test is performed in order to determine whether the absence of movement of the eye is due to neurological disorder or a mechanical mechanical restriction okay so we have to plug some forces between this and we have to tight we have to take it, take that muscles and we have to be you know take muscles like that way that pull this muscle that is the tightening over there yeah with a fixed over there so if it is a fixed then this is four duction test is positive not in diplopia acquired duals and pseudo duals so since in traumatic neck or brain injury cases the orbital tumors it can be the duals so i'm just going to see this globe one more time so this is the eye okay and say this is the optic nerve and there is a muscle is over there okay so if there any tumor is over there so definitely it will be the restricted like that way and if this see this is the muscles this is the muscles and this is some tumor is over there okay and which is tightening hold this muscle so if i is look like that way definitely this muscles don't want to allow to go that side so this is also look like a pseudo duo but it not the exactly for that kind of cases we have to send patients for the mri scan so this is the kind of things okay, okay. Uh, when i'm talking about the syndrome definitely some other cases will be uh, presented like you know dysplasia of the iris trauma pupillary anomalies yeah definitely it, because if the pseudo drion or is any kind of tumor definitely that optic nerve involvement will be there and definitely if it is optic nerve involvement then pupillary anomalies will be abnormal compared to the normal one cataractus yeah might be because it's a congenital due to the congenital most rarely cases present as a congenital cataract that's why heterochromia colobomas nystagmus epibulma dermatitis ptosis and optic nerve hyperplasia in case of uh, duans there is four uh, syndrome that is crocodile tear syndrome marcus gun jaw ring syndrome golden hull syndrome those are having nonce over that ear and cliff fell syndrome four syndromes are very common in brief i will say those are having four kind of syndrome they also have the drs okay so i just want to just brief i just want to give a very brief and short idea about that crocodile sian tian syndrome that it is a anomaly where its accessory branches from the gestatory nerve ends and uh, and occasionally in lacrimal glands so it's always look like i look like you know like cherry of the eyes and all okay and marcus gun phenomenon here we have to tell to the patient that we you have to be chewing face like that way if it is like that way see i'm chewing my face 
when i'm chewing my face like that way my eyes because luckily i don't have vrs so my my eyes are not doing you know uh, narrowing the things but those are having uh, marcus gall phenomenon they then one eye should be this is the if it is a uh, affected eye it should be stopped and it should be the bigger like that way. so this is also look like a pseudodian syndrome then for if a patient is positive for the crocodile tear syndrome or marcus gall phenomenon or golden hand syndrome we have to look at the duan syndrome is truly present or it's a pseudo duan clear okay the management of vrs now we come to the part of the management say be, being a um, like you know strabismus specialist being a squint specialist we whatever treatment we have to plan we have to always think about two things before planning anything number one patient comfort number two head posture and number two primary positions okay so three points you have to keep in your mind as per this you have to proceed the treatment that will do for either surgery or yes, some kind of you know vision therapy that odisha will be explain later i hope and the partial prism corrections also but whatever you are doing you have to think that the patient should be very much comfortable and our main motto to give that patient in a primary gauge so maximum patient with the drs maintain bsp with the face turn that i already show in the previous slides surgical treatment is required in few cases yeah definitely surgical which when it's required i'm just telling you that aims is correct why we are giving for the surgical indications number one correct manifest strabismus number 2 centralized field of vsb overcome need of large compensatory head posture and indication is cosmetically poor compensatory head posture because if a patient is having squint first of all they are going to lose about the self confidence if they are going to lose their self confidence due to any syndrome or lose any kind of strabismus they their problem will be affected in their daily living skills so their school either school performance or yeah, office performance or yeah, social performance will be very much affected so keep this point in our mind we have to uh, treat that patients the surgical number 2 number 1 is like drs with the isotropia those isotropia is less than 15 prism diopter we have to recession 5 mm so what is recession recession is a surgical procedure of used in for the strabismus in which extraocular muscles is removed from its insertion and uh, repositions as well on the low this is the Uh, this is talking about the recession, okay? And resection when it's a cutting about. So when isotropia is from 15 prism diopter to 5 prism diopter, we have to recession about MR 5 millimeter and uh, another eye from the MR in 3 millimeter. So in case of isotropia, greater than sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. I just missed it. That is. Sorry for that. In case of isotropia, uh, greater than twenty-five prism diopter, we have to recession MR in the both the eyes. In case of isotropia, that uh, it is very uncommon. That mean we know by this classes also there is three kind of DRS that ortho, iso, and exo. So most commonest type of DRS is the iso DRS. Okay. so this is all my reference and i thanks to shubhadeep mr shubhadeep one more time and acknowledgement to mohammad aliullah sir so i just want to be for, i mean i just want to uh, tell him that if you want to put some points which is going to be help for the malaysia students and all of us it would be really grateful to thanks and terima kasih for everyone i think i'm right right yes uh, Yeah, it's a Tani Makasi from me, from Nandi Pai Hospital. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, so we are open for questions now. If you yeah. uh, wish to have some queries or uh, any anything regarding the uh, areas, please go ahead. I think single areas is much more uh, dangerous than uh, normal areas. What do you think, Odisha? Sorry, uh, voice was not audible. <laughs> Single DRS is much more uh, dangerous than the normal DRS actually. 
Your voice is very really, uh, poor. Dr. S. Mm -hmm. Yeah, science is asking about that uh, pseudo DRS is more uh, tough compared to the or dangerous compared to the true DRS. Yes, Ida, you were asking something? Not me. Aina. Yeah. Aina, uh, Aida, Aina, you are asking something? Uh, you have some doubt? Actually, it started raining over here, so some of us may have some internet problem. Uh, for the voice okay. may, may break a bit. It started raining very heavily over here. I have a question. Sure, please just come up with your question. Okay, so uh, for the DRS, can it be uh, totally lost after the surgery or it can still recur? Sorry, after surgery, what, uh, uh, what was the question? Can it after... be totally treated or it can still recur after the surgery? Okay, so the primary aim for DRS uh, uh, surgical intervention is to change the head posture or if there are strabismus uh, associated with it in the uh, primary position of gains. Now, if uh, this surgery is being done to correct the head posture, usually it is good for one go. The recurrence are not there. But in terms of the limitation of the um that remains almost same probably there could be around 20 to 25 percent improvisation from the actual level so ideally you are targeting a patient to have a better binocular vision on primary gains all right Uh, I think the student asked, uh, hello, yes, Mr. Oli, uh, the yes. student was actually wanting to know that after surgery, is there uh -huh. a possibility that the TRS uh, reoccurs back or is it like 100% cured? Also, DRS, you are not correcting the DRS at all. So only okay. improvisation in the UM function or in the abduction is going to be by 20% or so. But the primary aim for surgery is to correct abnormal head posture and to improve a binocular vision at primary position of gain. Okay. Right. So it's, it's just a compensatory head posture that we are correcting. Yes, because we wish to correct uh, the cosmetic. Uh, if you see the surgery indication uh, by uh, nicely presented by Monitipa, that it's you need to correct the cosmetic appearance. Patient will come to you for the cosmetic appearance first. Because oh, the uh, other complaints like diplopia and toe is very rare since it is okay. almost uh, uh, same person cases congenital in nature. So they don't complain about diplopia. They do have strong separation uh, in the affected arm. Understood. So basically, they develop a sensory adaptation yes. and as well as a motor adaptation in the in, in form of compensatory head posture. Yes, first they try to do a motor. In this case, especially this, the best part of DRS is they try to do a motor adaptation first, okay. as in the abnormal head posture. Okay. Very rare cases you will get separation in this kind of patient. Usually, they have good amount of stereopsis and fusion present at abnormal head position. Okay. Oli, sir, Oli, sir uh, I have yes. one question. So yes. basically, definitely, we are just um, like improving the head postures and the, the and enhance the uh, like confidence, right? Right. So if a uh, like patient is come to our clinic with the uh, DRS and all, 
patient is having like a surgical thing only i mean get up then 15 prism diopter so can we uh, 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 like give therapy or like vision therapy is there any major role about the vision therapy without performing surgery and all okay so on ahp abnormal head posture then it is advisable to do surgery mm -hmm. if patient do not pose as the vision therapy which can improve the functional amplitude further so that you can somewhat correct the uh, the head posture you will able to improvise on that okay okay so in that case what you recommended first vision therapy then go for the surgery yeah surgery first then vision therapy expression in there is mm -hmm. so do the surgery to align uh, the do the head posture better or correct the stabis marks which is unlikely to have separation in there is patient again and again so the role of vision therapy almost in every cases of drs is significant to improve their functional divergence especially the divergence so that they can correct their head posture in a significant way sometimes it may reduce by 10 degrees only uh, giving functional divergence uh, component alone okay Are the the anesthetic any other thing like amblyopia, maybe so can give therapy for the amblyopia also, no? Right. So uh, if uh, there Yeah. Any more questions? So it's almost over. It was a good session. Hello. Uh, yes, please. Uh, for each type, do you have different pronouncies? Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, one second, please. There are three type of the R S, right? Right. And for each type, mm -hmm. the every uh they they have different pronouncies. Mm -hmm. Yes, the prognosis is uh, different for each uh, type of DRS. Ah, uh, okay. So, which one is the most uh, better outcome? We give better outcome. Better outcome if somebody got uh, uh, DRS along. You can correct their HP in a better way because they already positive. a good amount of functional amplitude okay i think odi sir for yes. drs uh, we have to always check functional amplitude for each and every patient because our mon motto whatever the strabismus is patient is having though it's a dvd or drs our main thing is to provide the binocular or single vision right in a primary gauge so i think it's important for the patient for the us also to understand exactly so i totally agree with that uh, but the drs also has a boon that it usually uh, has good amount of patient history of it in most of the cases mm -hmm. so we can work up on more and make it better and better yeah true I want to ask. Yes, Neda. Yes, go ahead. Um, if the if the patient has DRS syndrome, it was or is still remain the same on on his day. Uh, what was the last component? If the patient can has the DRS, can the syndrome become worse or or it remain the same? if the patient come with the syndrome usually it is constant in nature 
Sorry. It is constant in nature. It usually do not deteriorate uh, with uh, the age progressing. Okay. Because it's present since congenital action. Right. Okay, so any any other questions from any other students? Okay, so I think uh, thank you, Mr. Oli, and uh, thank you, Ms. Monidipa. I think, and also Mr. Shyan, of course, uh, for providing this session for our students. And we, we heartily thank all of you. Uh, I think from here on we will uh, we will terminate. I mean, close the session. And tomorrow we have another session with another semester, and we will continue from there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank